In number one, it says we have a party that will have hexagonal tables placed together with space for one person on each open side. So complete this table showing the number of people who can sit at N tables. So if we just have the one table, um, so then this would be sitting by itself, right? And so we would have six spaces on either side in order for people to, in, on any side for people to sit at. Now, once you add in, okay, once you add in another table, okay, now you're taking away a space, okay, and we're adding more. So now instead of having six spaces, okay, we have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten spaces. Okay, so we have two tables. Um, we have 10 spaces. Then when we add in another table, okay, when we add in a third table, okay, then you can count these spaces again, but we get rid of one and then we add these five more. Okay, so we get rid of one, which would get us down to nine because of this inner table, and then we add five more. So down one is nine, add five is 14. So ultimately, when we are um, deleting one but adding five, okay, that's an overall add of four. So then this is going to be 18 and this is going to be 22. So we actually add a net of four spaces for every table that we add in. So describe all the number of people who can so the table changes with each step. Okay, so we add four people each time. And then explain why P of 3.2 doesn't make sense in this situation. So remember that this is the number of tables. So then 3.2 would be a number of tables. Okay, so you can't have um, decimal tables. And then define P recursively for the nth term. So we're going to define our first term, okay, which was six people. So with one table, six people can sit, okay? So for n number of tables, how many people can sit? So we're going to take the previous number of tables, or the previous number of people, so the previous term plus four spots. And this is going to be for n is greater than or equal to 2. Number 2, Diego is making a stack of pennies. He starts with 5 pennies and then he adds one at a time. A penny is 1.52 millimeters thick. So each time he's going to be adding the, one of these. So complete the table. So he started with 5 pennies, which is this thick. Now he's going to add in... Okay, one penny thickness, which is 1.52. So he's going to add 1.52, which is going to get him to 9.12. Then he's going to add another penny of 1.52 to get 10.64. And then another one to get 12.16. Does the height of 1.52 pennies make sense? And no... Okay, because you can't add, um, or you can't have partial pennies. So you'd have to have a whole number of pennies, not a fractional amount or 0.52 of a penny. Number three, a piece of paper has an area of 80 square inches, and a person is going to cut off one fourth of the piece of paper, then a second person is going to cut off another fourth of the remaining paper, a third person is going to cut off a fourth of what is left, and so on. So complete the table, okay, where A is the area in square inches of the remaining paper. Okay, so remember, like, let's just look at an idea here um, of fourths. Okay, so if we have this and we're going to cut off a fourth of this. Okay, how much is remaining? So if somebody takes this fourth, how many fourths do we have left? So we have three fourths of the area left. 
So what we're actually multiplying by here is three fourths. So three fourths of 80, okay, is 60. Because a fourth of 80 is 20. So we're going to subtract that off. But you can just do three fourths to get directly there. So then three fourths of 60, the remaining paper is going to be 45. And then three fourths of 45 is 33.75 um, square inches remaining. So now let's define this for the nth term. So we'll do the a sub zero term equals 80. So the a sub n term is going to be equal to a sub n minus 1 times 3 fourths when n is greater than or equal to 1 because we started with the zero term. Okay, so they defined the zero term. So now for every term after zero, okay, so 1 or greater, we're going to multiply the previous term by 3 fourths. So what do you think a reasonable domain is here? So if you just kind of keep doing this where you keep cutting, so you keep doing three-fourths of this, three-fourths of this, three-fourths of this, um, you'll get down to, when you get to 15, it's about one square inch of area that's left. And getting below that seems to be a bit small. Okay, so I would say something of, 0 to 15. So you can take a fourth away 15 times. After that, it's getting to be too small. Number four, here's a recursive formula for the definition of a sequence. So our first term is 35, and then we have this sequence where the previous term minus 8 lists the first five terms. So we have 35, and then we'll subtract 8 from that, which is 27, subtract 8, which is 19, subtract 8, which is 11, and subtract 8, which is 3. Now let's graph it. Um, so we're going to go to 1 is at 35. Term 2 is at 27, so here's 25, so between 25 and 30. 3 is at 19, so almost 20. 4 is at 11, so just over 10. And then 5 is at 3, so just below 5. And then we can see it's arithmetic, subtracting 8, so we get that straight line. Number 5, here's a graph of a sequence. Define it recursively. Um, so we want to come up with the first term. Okay, so we want to define the a sub 1 term. So the a sub 1 term is here at negative 3. Then we want to look at what's happening to each term. Okay, so we're going to take the previous term and do what? And we can see that it's linear, so we just have to see how much it's going up each time. Okay, so this one was at negative 3. This one's at 0. This one is at 3. This one is at 6. This one is at 9, so it's going up 3 each time. And then we'll say for n is greater than or equal to 2 since we defined the first term. Number 6, here's a recursive definition for this sequence. Um, explain how you know that these definitions represent the same sequence, so for both of these. Okay, so in this first one, they give us the zero term. Okay, so our first term of 19, then they're saying we're going to take the previous term minus 6. Okay, so we're going to minus 6 for the second, or for the first term. Then we're going to minus 6 for the second term. Then we're going to minus 6 for the third term. So this one is just saying we'll start at 19 and minus 6 per term. Okay, so this is still going to be minusing 6 per term. So that's how we know that they're the same. Okay, they've got that minus 6 each time. And then select a de definition and calculate f equals 20. Or sorry, f of 20. So calculate the 20th term. Um, and then why did you choose the one you chose? Well, if I do the recursive formula, so if I do this, I'm going to have to subtract it 19 times. I'm going to have to sit here and write out 
19 minus 6, which is 13. Take 13 minus 6, which is 7. Take 7 minus 6, which is 1, and keep going because I need the previous term. In this other one, okay, in this one, you just need the term number that you're finding. So if I'm going to find the 20th term, this one says take 19 minus 6 20 times. So then I'm just going to have to do 19 minus 120 to find out that the 20th term is negative 101. So you don't have to have every previous term in order to get it. So that's why I would choose this one. And then number seven, an arithmetic sequence starts um, at 20 and then 16. So it's arithmetic. So we know that it's adding or subtracting. In this case, it's going down. So it's minusing four or adding a negative four. Explain how you would calculate the 500th term. So you would take 20, that's your first term. Minus four gives you 16, your second term. When you've minused four once, your third term, it would be minusing four for a second time. Okay, so in this case, you're gonna take 20 and you're gonna subtract four, um, 499 times.